1959, Fidel Castro came to power. Nixon and Khrushchev debated in the kitchen. NASA introduced the first astronauts to America. The Barbie doll was born. And a group of pioneering auto insurers took the radical step of creating an organization that placed their industry at the forefront of reducing deaths and injuries in motor vehicle crashes. At first, the Institute was a means for insurers to support academic and other organizations working in the field of highway safety. Then in 1968, Institute directors decided to reorganize. They named Dr. William Haddon Jr., who had been the first director of the National Highway Safety Bureau, to lead the new institute. What resulted is a scientific research and communications group that has led the way in highway safety for the last four decades. Haddon viewed highway safety as a mainstream public health issue to be addressed scientifically. He elaborates in an early Institute film. It is time for society to decide to promote and demand nothing less than vehicle packages and roadside environments that protect people. The new Institute's first national exposure auto bumpers up resulted from rear. bumper tests are not doing the job that they're supposed to do, which soon led to the first federal bumper standard. For decades, Institute bumper tests have been the main source of comparative information for consumers on how well cars resist damage in low-speed collisions. Buckle up for safety, buckle up. In the 1960s, efforts to get people to buckle up were mostly limited to public education campaigns. But in 1971, the Institute revealed that belt use was low and TV ads urging people to buckle up weren't effective. My little girl just hit her head. Uh, you have safety belts. Uh, yeah. You mean you don't make your child wear the belts? What did work was the first belt law. These findings became the underpinnings of the belt use laws in effect in every state. Occupants of small cars involved in crashes are being routinely exposed to far greater hazard than occupants of larger sized cars. Since 1971, the Institute has continued to demonstrate the hazards of small cars and was the first to bring public attention to the potential conflict between safety and fuel economy. In 1972, Institute researchers created the Highway Loss Data Institute to compare insurance losses among passenger vehicles. For years, these comparisons have been the sole source of consumer information about how car choices affect insurance costs. How'd you like to hit these rocks at 60 miles an hour? The rigid steel signpost, the telephone pole, the guardrail. With an end like this, it can spear right through your car and you. After viewing this film, U.S. lawmakers directed federal officials to correct the problems. These demonstrations led to new rules to reduce fuel spills and the risk of fire in crashes. In 1974, the Institute evaluated the consequences of lowering the legal minimum age for purchasing alcohol. These findings provided the basis for enacting 21 minimum age laws in all states. Children are dying and being maimed needlessly and inexcusably on our highways. The Institute conducted the first scientific observations of child passengers, finding few riding restrained. This supported the need for child restraint laws, and now all states have them. So here is Donald L. Schaefer. Welcome him, please. It's the airbag is such a fantastic device and so important for life-saving and injury prevention that I hate to talk of it in terms of dollars, but it will have, in our opinion, an ultimate substantial impact on insurance premiums if the present plans to make them available on cars go forward. The Institute airbag crash tests were shown to a congressional committee and then widely broadcast by the media, providing graphic evidence of effectiveness. Insurers' continuing efforts led to a unanimous Supreme Court decision in favor of airbags. 
Get ready, here they come, one way or another. Airbags or automatic seat belts are coming on cars to be sold in this country. And ultimately, to frontal airbags being standard equipment in the cars we drive today. In 1978, the Institute demonstrated the inadequacies of underwrite guards on the backs of big rigs and offered alternative designs that worked. The people doing the singling out are from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, an outfit financed by the American insurance industry. In these sorts of maneuvers and other maneuvers, the Jeep does roll over, and it rolls over at very low speeds. These tests were the first to demonstrate the elevated rollover propensity of the Jeep CJ, prompting federal regulators to require rollover warnings on some vehicles. When you look in the rearview mirror and see one of those big trucks bearing down on you, remember this. I think it's fair to say that over half the trucks on the highway right now have defective brakes of one form or another. Over half? Over half. One reason trucks took so long to stop was that drivers often disconnected the front brakes. This was legal until institute tests led federal regulators to ban disconnection. Institute research provided the scientific basis for administrative license revocation laws, which are now on the books in most states. These laws are effective because they increase public perception that punishment for impaired driving is likely and will be swiftly applied. Oh, you on you, In 1992, insurers dedicated the Vehicle Research Center, a world-class facility that expanded the Institute's influence. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety's Vehicle Research Center is dedicated to four men whose vision has guided U.S. property casualty insurers to their leadership position in the field of highway safety research. We are going to do things in this facility that were only dreams a while back. The first area of research at the new facility was frontal offset testing. What you just saw and what you're watching again now in slow motion are the first pictures ever released to the public of an entirely new kind of automobile safety test. These tests have provided consumers with comparative crash test ratings and pressured manufacturers to improve vehicle designs. Now, almost all vehicles do well in this test. Automakers also responded when the Institute rated head restraints based on their potential to reduce neck injuries in rear crashes. And later, the Institute began working with the International Research Council for Automobile Repairs on dynamic tests of head restraints. Insurers teamed with federal and state officials to sponsor North Carolina's Click It or Ticket program, which became a model for all states to increase belt use. The public-private partnership that's beginning here today in North Carolina is going to demonstrate to the rest of the country how to save lives and prevent injuries. It will work. Sixteen-year-olds have almost three times the crash risk of older teenagers, 18 to 19-year-olds, almost 10 times the crash risk of middle-aged drivers. Based in large part on institute research indicating the benefits of driving restrictions for teenagers, states began adopting graduated licensing laws. Later, the Institute was among the first to evaluate these laws, finding they reduce crashes and save lives. Now, you can't station a cop at every intersection, but you can station something else. Institute research convinced state and local officials to begin using red light cameras to reduce intersection crashes. Now, cameras are being used in more than 400 communities nationwide. Dad, no! You turned into a roundabout! A lot of people thought they wouldn't like roundabouts, but it just took some time to get used to them. And Institute studies show they're reducing crashes, congestion, and fuel use. The Institute looked at the effectiveness of side airbags and began testing for side impact crash worthiness. Automakers responded by improving vehicle designs and speeding up the introduction of side airbags ahead of federal requirements. In 2005, the Institute launched Top Safety Pick Awards, 
These vehicles in their size classes are the safest vehicles out there in our estimation. Manufacturers are coming to grips with the idea that safety sells, and they're designing their vehicles to provide better protection in front, side, and rear collisions. And hail is a top safety pick. Institute research highlighted the huge benefits of electronic stability control in reducing crashes, and in 2006, made it a top safety pick requirement. In 2007, the Institute worked with the Highway Loss Data Institute on the first comparisons of death rates and insurance losses among motorcycles by type. Sports bikes make up only 10% of motorcycles on the road, but they are involved in a quarter of motorcycle deaths. And the Institute was the first to compare booster seats and rate how well they fit children for the best protection in crashes. More than 10,000 people are killed in rollover accidents in this country every year. And now, for the first time, a study out today shows a vital link between roof strength and your chances of survival. Vehicles with the stronger roofs have fewer injuries and fatalities in rollover crashes. Federal regulators finally boosted roof strength requirements after Institute research documented the importance of strong roofs to protect people in rollover crashes. The Institute's contributions to highway safety are possible only because of the commitment auto insurers made 50 years ago to prevent the harm caused by motor vehicle crashes. People are alive today because insurers made this public health commitment. And we can expect to save many more lives in the years to come.